Full warning, there are three cats in this small office right now. But that's right, Scout is tolerating the kittens at least. We don't have them around each other all day, but she definitely does the majority of the day now with them. And then we just like give her some breaks here and there because we wanna make sure that she's still like feeling comfortable, feeling like this is her space. But right now she's like passed out. So she's accepting that they are in here and they were passed out until about five seconds before I pressed record. And now they're like play fighting slash grooming each other. It's very confusing. Anyways, hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So I have completed another decade of my life and now I'm 30. Crazy, I know. I mean, maybe it's not crazy for, for you. It's crazy for me because I've been here the whole time. Like this. <laughs> A weird way to talk about aging. But anyways, I, as you may know, love book lists, like lists of books that you should read if X, Y, Z. For example, I've got my 100 books bucket list poster in the back there, just really getting neglected recently. So today I thought it'd be fun to go through like a list of books that you're supposed to read in your 30s. Now that I'm 30, I need to be prioritizing these books. And then ideally I'll have read some of these already and I'll be able to give some insight to them. Uh, but then also secondary, you can help me decide which of these books are actually important to read and that I should be reading. So let me know if there's any that like you agree that should be read in your 30s or just should be read in general. It doesn't have to be like at a specific time because I do think that that's a little bit of a weird notion, but it is kind of just like fun to read through those lists. Okay, let's get started. 20 books everyone should read in their 30s. Let's see what we've got. Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I read this in my 20s, sorry for breaking the rules, but I thought that this book was fantastic. I really enjoyed it, so highly recommend. Thumbs up from me. I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I have also read this one. I would not say read this in your 30s. This is kind of like a young adult book to me, I would say. I mean, we can call me a young adult, but... <laughs> I don't think I'm technically in that demographic. I thought it was a pretty good book. I didn't think it was like incredible or anything. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. I do really want to read this one, but I have not yet. So maybe in my 30s, I'll read it. The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. I've also heard a lot about this one, but I have not read it. The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. I have not heard this one. How little things can make a big difference. This kind of seems like, I'm assuming it's a um, nonfiction. Tipping Point is the magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold tips and spreads like wildfire. Ooh, that does sound pretty interesting actually. Flow by Mihaly. Oh boy. No, I can't. I don't. I don't even know where to start with that pronunciation. But I think this is like getting into the flow state. Is that what this one is? Because I remember like the idea growing greatly. I don't know. Maybe I would read this book. I don't read a lot of books about like productivity necessarily. Although I did read Atomic Habits, which I do think is a really fantastic nonfiction. Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed. Oh, so I read Wild by her, but I haven't read this. I didn't even really realize that she had written other books. When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. Maybe? This one I've for sure heard of, but I don't actually know what it's about. Uh, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. I have read this one. I didn't super enjoy it, but maybe it's because I didn't read it in my 30s. No, I thought that the books, it's told in an interesting way where like it's kind of nested stories where there's like one story in the center and then there's like a half of a second story that's before and after that. And then another story that's split in half and put before and after that. And I think it goes like five levels deep. So it's a little bit tough to follow, especially from like the first story Story, which you read at the beginning and then at the end of the book but the center stories I did like so like interesting the way it was done just not my cup of tea atonement by Ian McEwen uh this one I've got lessons by him but I have not read it yet or any other books by him I don't know why I said it like that <laughs> between the world and me by ta Coates I have read this one and I did really love it this might have been on my top 10 of like 2019 books? No, 2020. When did I start? 2020 was when I started my YouTube. <laughs> the Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. I haven't read anything by Joan Didion and I really feel like I should fix that. Which one should I start with? Because I see a bunch of different ones coming up. Full Home, Fun Home. I don't know why I read Full. Uh, by Alison Bechtel. Is Alison Bechtel the one that came up with the Bechtel test? Is that a really dumb question? I Feel Bad About My Neck by Nora Ephron. I'm very curious at where the title comes from and I wanna know what about the neck she feels bad about. Oh, who are getting older and dealing with tribulations of maintenance, menopause, emptiness, and life itself. I don't think I wanna read I understand the value of something like that, but I don't 
think I want to. Not yet, maybe 40s. Water for elephants. Wow, I haven't even heard of this in a long time. I remember it being like huge when the movie came out. I haven't seen the movie. I haven't read the book. Synopsis wise, like I'm not really drawn to it. The Rules Do Not Apply by Ariel Levy. Ooh, this sounds really good actually. I haven't heard of it, but I am intrigued. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I have indeed read this one. I thought it was good. I also watched the show, but only for the first season. Then I started the second one and I was like, Ugh. Although I've heard good things about it since. I don't know, I find it endlessly depressing. <laughs> Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Other Concerns by Mindy Kaling? I've read this one. I think I might have read it when I was like 18, 19 years old. I, I remember reading this when I was going to UCF and riding the bus over from my apartment to campus for class. I remember having it out and being like, is this a really weird title of something to be reading like in public? Like, everybody can see that I'm reading a book called Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me? Like, does that look pathetic? But it was fantastic. I really, uh, it, it really did a lot for me, especially at the time. Also, Yes Please by Amy Poehler. That helped me so much in my early 20s. Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. I've heard tons about this. Uh, it's a collection of essays. I am interested in, in reading this one. What I Talk About When I Talk About Running by Haruki Murakami. I've read one Murakami, but it was the big one, 1Q84. Uh, and I would like to read more by him. Oh, and that's it. We made it through the list. Okay, so I am going to now, I think, put up a list of all of the books that I hadn't heard of or hadn't read. And if you could just tell me like from this list, what books should I actually read? Like which one would you be like, yeah, definitely that one, read it in your 30s. And then maybe I'll make a follow-up video to this where I read some of these books. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you did enjoy it. And if you did, please do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.